Dates and symbolism matter in Russia, and no more so than to the self-styled historian-in-chief, Vladimir Putin. Today is Defender of the Fatherland Day, where Russians celebrate their armed forces and remember fallen soldiers. It was no accident that around this time two years ago, Putin launched the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Today will also be a day to remember for the families of three people killed overnight in Odessa. A drone and missile attack targeted the port city and Dnipro further inland. More dates to reflect on. A week to the day since opposition leader Alexei Navalny died inside the remote Arctic penal colony dubbed the Polar Wolf. This afternoon, his mother was given a cruel ultimatum, either agree to a secret burial within three hours or her son would be buried within the prison grounds. Yesterday, Joe Biden met with his widow and daughter. The meeting coincided with the announcement of 500 new sanctions targeting individuals, including officials connected to Navalny's imprisonment. Alexei was an incredibly courageous man. His family is courageous as well. I assured them his legacy will continue to live around the world, and we in the United States are going to continue to ensure that Putin pays the price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. President Zelensky remembering Ukraine's fallen in Lviv with the Danish Prime Minister. The EU has also published details of its package of sanctions today. 200 individuals targeted, including for the first time Chinese and Indian companies accused of supporting Moscow's war effort. Yesterday, Vladimir Putin went all Top Gun for the cameras. Symbolism again, not lost in the cockpit of a nuclear supersonic jet. Over the last two years, Russia has transformed itself into a war economy. Record levels of discounted oil exports to China and South America, for example, have given the country a degree of sanction inoculation. The European sanctions announced today also target people involved in, quote, the military indoctrination of Ukrainian children. Which brings us to defender of the Fatherland events in a school in occupied Mariupol. A soldier delivers a lesson in Russian revisionist history, holds forth on how the city was, quote, liberated. Advain and Mary. Mary. <laughs> Today we caught up with two friends who escaped from Mariupol two years ago. Vadim on the left was one of the district's deputy mayors, Mikola, the boss of Mariupol TV. They describe how thousands of people have been brought in from Russia to rebuild and repopulate the city. According to them, these Russians are the new elite, the highest tier of a new caste system. For now, in Mariupol, it's uh, like a caste uh, system, and our people, uh, Ukrainian people who live in occu occupation, they are the lower ca caste, yeah? So uh, they don't have work, they don't have hope, they don't have uh, plans for tomorrow, for next year, for next month. They don't have it. How will these men mark the second anniversary of the full-scale invasion and the destruction of their city? Vadim will be thinking about his mother, Elena. She died of cancer in Mariupol because she couldn't access health care during the fighting two years ago. And because medical supplies had run out and there were no doctors around, she could not be saved. She could no longer be moved out. She couldn't be transported. And so she stayed there, and she died there. So, on Defender of the Fatherland Day for some, memories of a mother for Vadim.